Well, good Saturday, my friends, and welcome to this 15th day of October. It is day 288 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. My name is Hunter, and I'm coming to you from a very warm Portland, Oregon, or just right outside of Portland. Yeah, it was, uh, it's been in the 80s, which is crazy. But hey, I'll take it. It's beautiful, and it's great to get outside in this warm weather. But right now, no matter where we are, we are going to warm ourselves by the fires of God's Word. Our God is a consuming fire. Today, our journey takes us into the book of Malachi, chapters 3 and 4, then Psalm 148, and we finish our reading in Acts, chapter 5. This is the Word of the Lord. Malachi chapter 3. Look, I'm sending my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Then the Lord you are seeking will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you look for so eagerly is surely coming, says the Lord of heaven's armies. But who will be able to endure it when he comes? Who will be able to stand and face him when he appears? For he will be like a blazing fire that refines metal, or like a strong soap that bleaches clothes. He will sit like a refiner of silver, burning away the dross. He will purify the Levites, refining them like gold and silver, so that they may once again offer acceptable sacrifices to the Lord. Then once more the Lord will accept the offerings brought to him by the people of Judah and Jerusalem, as he did in the past. At that time... I will put you on trial. I am eager to witness against all the sorcerers and adulterers and liars. I will speak against those who cheat employees of their wages, who oppress widows and orphans, or who deprive the foreigners living among you of justice. For these people do not fear me, says the Lord of heaven's armies. I am the Lord, and I do not change. That is why you descendants of Jacob are not already destroyed. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. Now return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. But you ask, how can we return when we have never gone away? Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me, bringing all the tithes into the storehouses so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven's armies. You have said terrible things about me, says the Lord. But you say, what do you mean? What have we said against you? You have said, what's the use of serving God? What have we gained by obeying his commands or by trying to show the Lord of heaven's armies that we are sorry for our sins? From now on, we will call the arrogant blessed. For those who do evil get rich, and those who dare God to punish them suffer no harm. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with each other, and the Lord listened to what they said. In his presence, a scroll of remembrance was written to record the names of those who feared him and always thought about the honor of his name. They will be my people, says the Lord of heaven's armies. On the day when I act in judgment, they will be my own special treasure. I will spare them as a father spares his own obedient child. Then you will again see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. Malachi 4 the Lord of heaven's army says, The day of judgment is coming, burning like a furnace. On that day the arrogant and the wicked will be burned up like straw. They will be consumed, roots, branches and all. But for you who fear my name, 
the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings, and you will go free, leaping with joy like calves led out to pasture. On that day when I act, you will tread upon the wicked as if they were dust under your feet, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. Remember to obey the law of Moses, my servant, all the decrees and regulations that I gave him on Mount Sinai for all Israel. Look, I am sending you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord arrives. His preaching will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with the curse. Psalm 148 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him from the skies. Praise Him, all angels. Praise Him, all the armies of heaven. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you twinkling stars. Praise Him, skies above. Praise Him, vapors high above the clouds. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord. For He issued His command, and they came into being. He set them in place forever and ever. His decree will never be revoked. Praise the Lord from the earth, you creatures of the ocean depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, wind and weather that obey him, mountains and all the hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all livestock, small scurrying animals and birds, kings of the earth, and all the people, rulers and judges of the earth, young men and young women, old men and children. Let them all praise the name of the Lord, for his name is very great. His glory towers over the earth and heaven. He has made his people strong, honoring his faithful ones, the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Acts 5. But there was a certain man named Ananias, who with his wife Sapphira, sold some property. He brought part of the money to the apostles, claiming it was the full amount. With his wife's consent, he kept the rest. Then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit, and you kept some of the money for yourself. The property was yours to sell or not sell as you wished, and after selling it, the money was also yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us, but to God. As soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell to the floor and died. Everyone who heard about it was terrified. Then some young men got up, wrapped him in a sheet, and took him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, was this the price you and your husband received for your land? Yes, she replied. That was the price. And Peter said, How could the two of you think of conspiring to test the spirit of the Lord like this? The young men who buried your husband are just outside the door, and they will carry you out too. Instantly she fell to the floor and died. When the young men came in and saw that she was dead, they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear gripped the entire church and everyone else who heard what had happened. The apostles were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Colonnade. But no one else dared to join them, even though all the people had high regard for them. Yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord, crowds of both men and women, as a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. The high priest and his officials, who were Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. Then he told them, Go to the temple and give the people this message of life. So at daybreak, the apostles entered the temple, as they were told, and immediately began teaching. When the high priest and his officials arrived, they convened the high council, 
the full assembly of the elders of Israel. Then they sent for the apostles to be brought from the jail for trial. But when the temple guards went to the jail, the men were gone. So they returned to the council and reported, The jail was securely locked, with guards standing outside. But when we opened the gates, no one was there. When the captain of the temple guard and the leading priest heard this, they were perplexed, wondering where it would all end. Then someone arrived with startling news. The men you put in jail are standing in the temple teaching the people. The captain went with his temple guards and arrested the apostles, but without violence, for they were afraid the people would stone them. Then they brought the apostles before the high council, where the high priest confronted them. We gave you strict orders never again to teach in this man's name, he said. Instead, you have filled all Jerusalem with your teaching about him, and you want to make us responsible for his death. But Peter and the apostles replied, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on a cross. Then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey him. When they heard this, the high council was furious and decided to kill them. But one member, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, who was an expert in religious law and respected by all the people, stood up and ordered that the people be sent outside the council chamber for a while. Then he said to his colleagues, Men of Israel, take care what you are planning to do to these men. Some time ago there was that fellow Thutis who pretended to be someone great. About four hundred others joined him, but he was killed and all his followers went their various ways. The whole movement came to nothing. After him at the time of the census there was Judas of Galilee. He got people to follow him, but he was killed too, and all his followers were scattered. So my advice is, leave these men alone, let them go. If they are planning and doing these things merely on their own, it will soon be overthrown. But if it is from God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You may even find yourself fighting against God. The others accepted his advice. They called in the apostles and had them flogged. Then they ordered them never again to speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. The apostles left the high council rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they continued to teach and preach this message, Jesus is the Messiah. And now may our Lord, our Messiah, may he now give his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Jerusalem is burning with the message, and these men cannot be stopped. Do you know what that message is? It has nothing to do with politics or with personal agendas. The message is life. Verse 19 and 20. An angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail, brought them out. Then he told them, go to the temple and give the people this message of life. That's it. It's that simple. That is the gospel, the good news. It's life here, right now. It's not just a ticket to heaven in the sweet by and by. It's not about the Sadducees versus the Pharisees or the Democrats against the Republicans, the left versus the right. It's, it's far, far more simple than that. It is life. It is Him the one who is life itself. And that is so good because that is what we need. That is what we long for. That is what the world is waiting for. We can spend so much of our time and energy on things that are far from life. But the angel reminds the apostles clearly, as he reminds us today in these passages, that the message is so simple. Go tell them that there is life. Jesus came to give us life and life abundant. He says in John's Gospel, chapter 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, destroy. But I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Christ has come to offer us 
life. So today, let's say yes. Let's agree with him. Let's stay in step with him who is life and walk with Jesus. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul. That's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife and my daughters and my son. And that's the prayer that I have for you. May it be so. Well, dear friends, I am about to head out the door to go pick up Heather at the airport. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. But let me encourage you to step out into the life that you have in Jesus today. Step out with the confident assurance that you have been fully embraced by the God who is love, that there is nothing that can separate you from that love. With that confidence, go forward into your world, offering that love. You've got nothing to prove. You can fully rest in what Christ has done and what you have become, a new creation. So, hey, (laughs) let's do it. Let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let's never forget this, that you are loved. No doubt about that. All righty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Oh, no, Heather will talk to you again tomorrow. I'll catch you back on Monday. Bye-bye.